images can be presented to people as if they were real, and this is described as virtual reality. For example, assistant practitioners at Michigan University, particularly the personnel of emergency wards, first receive training in a virtual operating room. Using three-dimensional glasses, they gain experience on virtual patients. Neo continues his education in a simulated environment, and the subject is once again the Matrix. In the Matrix, everything is the same as the original objects. People, buildings, cars, even the traffic regulations people abide by as they walk along the streets. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Who's it? This... This isn't the Matrix? No. It's another training program designed to teach you one thing. Neo looks around in astonishment. He has now begun to see the truth. Everything around him is part of the illusion he is living, and there is no reality to them. The world Neo imagines to be real is nothing more than a simulation. Cars, the noise of the city, the traffic, skyscrapers, the ocean, people, in short, everything, are just images forming in his mind. It is clear that the reality in daily life is just like in this film. Yet most people are sadly unaware of this. Although it may appear exceedingly convincing, nothing around us is actually real. The material world we refer to as real is merely a collection of perceptions in our minds. Morpheus and Neo are now sitting in front of a television. There are images belonging to the Matrix on the screen. The world that you know. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. It exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the Matrix. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. This is the world as it exists today. Welcome to the desert of the real. The world seen by Neo and that shown by Morpheus are totally different. The images that Neo imagines to be real are actually pictures of a world he wishes to see. Neo has hitherto thought that he was in a real world and had never harbored any doubts as to that reality. In other words, he was quite unaware that the world was an illusory one. Billions of people living in the world today are in exactly the same position. Neo is now preparing for combat training. He finds the simulated environment he enters highly realistic and is therefore very excited. Yet he is still lying down motionless while all this happens. How about combat training?
jujitsu. I'm going to learn jujitsu. I know kung fu. Show me. This is a sparring program, similar to the programmed reality of the Matrix. It has the same basic rules, rules like gravity. What you must learn is that these rules are no different than the rules of a computer system. Some of them can be bent. Others can be broken. People today can feel themselves to be somewhere very different to where they actually are. For example, stereo images are reflected off all the walls and floor of this room. People wandering around this room with stereo glasses imagine themselves to be somewhere very different. They can even react to the things they see and hear as if these were real. The truth is that there is no need for an outside world in order for us to imagine ourselves to be somewhere very different, because everything we imagine we experience actually takes place in our minds. We can therefore never make direct contact with the original of matter. In other words, everything we perceive and are sure exists throughout our lives is actually images and feelings forming in the brain. Another film to examine the relationship between the real and virtual worlds is Vanilla Sky. David Ames runs a large publishing business. The people in his environment admire his physical appearance, financial status and social circle. until his face is ruined in a traffic accident. <laughs> David Ames then signs a contract with a company. Under the agreement, the company will enable him to have a lucid dream. Meanwhile, his body will be kept in a special location. David Ames thus goes on living in a virtual world. He touches the objects around him in the virtual world, eats, laughs and enjoys himself as if these were all real. In one scene, the lead character, David, is speaking with a doctor who asks whether he can distinguish between illusion and reality. David is at first certain that he can. Yet as he strives to recall events in his memory, he eventually becomes uncertain and says that he cannot tell the difference. Interestingly, while he is saying all this, he is actually living in an illusory world being shown to him. Who is the man in the restaurant? Who is it? I can't. Can you tell the difference between dreams and reality? Of course, can you? Think about it. Think with your head. You signed a contract, did you not? I signed something. Was the man in the restaurant there? Accept your body's resistance. Let your head answer. Yes. That's right. Who is Ellie? 